Before we begin, we know that the plastic container weighs 29 grams. We have added 178 grams, minus 29, so I make that about 150 grams of molochite in there. We now add a total of 178, um, about 30 grams of silicon carbide. And we also add a little bit of magnetite powder. Shall we say 30 grams as well? Okay, about 30 grams. Okay, shall we try that? Maybe a little bit more magnetite. Okay. I think that the constitution is not very uh, solid, so I'm going to add a bit more magnetite. And give that a go now. Also note that the spoon, the magnetite in the spoon, because this is stainless steel, seems to stick to the spoon because of the magnetic attraction. For future reference, I advise using a plastic spoon, not a stainless steel one. Please note, I think you should be less generous with the prime coat binder in future because I've added too much and it's becoming a pain to try and get the right constitution. So I'm going to add yet even more magnetite and hopefully this should work now. Please note also that if you're having difficulty bashing up the silicon carbide, i.e. the sharpening stone like I did, this works quite effectively where you have the glass of the silicon carbide with a strainer with plenty of big holes and do this. I've added yet even more molochite. When I spoke to the company I got this stuff off the phone, they said there really is no exact ratio, it's all done by eye until you get a sort of a ratio that's not too powdery, not too slushy. And I've added as much silicon carbide and as much magnetite as that I care to. And I'm now going to add a bit more molochite. I might add a little bit more, a little bit more uh, magnetite powder in there just for good luck, because I, you know the more the merrier. And really I only want about two or three layers around this crucible and hopefully I can always save some for, uh, you know, for another time when I need to make a bigger crucible. But let's give this a go anyway. And there, I think that's good. As you see here, it's sort of like a nice thick porridge material. That's the sort of stuff you really want. And there's a bit of silicon carbide in there, quite a lot of magnetite, quite a bit of molochite, and a bit of the prime pit bender, binder even. And I think I've made the right constituency now where I'm ready to apply it to the, uh, the graphite crucible. So here goes. But I'm going to need to get a, uh, a baking tray for this. So here goes. We have the, uh, the slurry, graphite crucible. And just literally just slop it on like that. In fact, I'm going to be really messy, and I am going to just use my hand with this. Yuck. It's all like popping off. Yuck. It's not working quite as I would have expected. Hmm. The first coat is done. It goes a slightly orange colour. I'm now going to apply the second coat.
And now back in the oven again for another 10 minutes to let the second coat go. Well, on quite a high temperature. And here we are after the second coat. As you see, we've very nearly surrounded it with this uh, magnetite paste. We're going to do one more coat and then we're going to call it a day. Because uh, I have to have the windows right open because it really is smelly stuff. It's not harmful, but it is smelly. This is now going to be the third and final layer of the magnetite molochite layer before I start layering it up with just plain molochite binder. It seems like a real waste to have to uh, lose that because I think that what's going to happen is that's going to solidify because obviously it does cost a bit to get magnetite but I have saved some and I still have some silicon carbide left over but I think that's just going to harden out because as you see here it's already starts to harden. I mean not as quickly as when you use the oven but oh well maybe for in future reference I'll learn to use less binder. So here we go. We'll hook on, really high temperature, on, and we'll chuck her in. And we'll leave that for a bit. And there we have it. We have the triple lead um, molochite graphite um, silicon carbide uh, binder finally cooked. But I'm going to put that back in the oven for a bit longer because although you see the surface layer is quite well cooked, um, the inner layers underneath it aren't very well so, so I'm going to cook it a bit longer before adding just a plain uh, layered molochite um, around the outside and the purpose of that is this layer here is really going to soak up the microwaves and get the graphite crystal really hot but if I just have this layer I suspect that what's going to happen is the heat's just going to simply radiate out outwards so I'm going to cook that properly so it's nice and hard, it's going to survive all the high temperatures so I'm going to bake it in the oven again for even longer and longer and longer time. I'm absolutely sure it's crisp dry but as you see it's not nice and stuck to the graphite crucible um, and then afterwards I'm going to do some more molochite layers. Sadly this is going to have to be wasted, there's nothing more I could do with it because what I've realised with this substance is less is more, really less is more because if you use too much uh, um, magnetite it sort of dissipates the heat too much you really want less because you know if you put like one gram of water in it heats up much more quickly than if you put 10 grams of water in etc okay so I'm gonna put that back in the oven again I'm gonna really get it nice and crispy and uh, I'll come and rescue that in a little while and here is the final baked magnetite shell it's stuck on there pretty hard I don't want to touch it, it's quite hot because it's been in the oven. But as you see, it's also slightly magnetic. So I think this is going to be quite good for, um, for my microwave experiment. I'll add the other layers of ordinary molochite on in my next video. I need to clean the oven out and get supper ready now.